Hi there, and welcome to the Cotswold Explorer. I'm Robin Shuckborough, and we're exploring the wonderful region of the Cotswolds in southwest England. We've decided to revisit the centre of the region and find some hidden gems, places that are not quite so famous, but still just as beautiful. And today you find Ross, Widget, Gizmo and me in the extraordinary little village of Chedworth. Now, we were here very close by in the woods not very long ago for, to film a rather gruesome story for Halloween. And this is a wonderful demonstration of how this area can surprise. Even if you've been traveling around it the way we have for years, sometimes you can be taken completely by surprise. And this little village of Chedworth is one of those occasions. It is utterly beautiful. We're gonna show you around. The church is dramatic and exciting. You can see it behind me. Come with me, we'll show you around. This extraordinary village hangs off both sides of a steep valley, no doubt cut by the meltwater from the last ice age, and down which flows a tiny tributary to the Colne River. We are truly in Lark Rise to Candleford territory here. Not geographically, of course, I mean, we're many miles away from Cottesford, but certainly in atmosphere and peaceful, unspoiled beauty. This little village feels as if it hasn't changed for hundreds, if not thousands, of years. Even getting here feels like an adventure. The access roads from both directions are single track and extremely steep. We caught the postman doing his rounds, stopping at each house to make his deliveries, and it's clear that this only works if there is no one else following him or coming in the other direction. This amazing place survives only if there is virtually no traffic and what there is travels extremely slowly and is prepared to wait. We met several people during our visit. They were working away at whatever they were doing and almost all of them told us they had grown up in the village. Those that hadn't came from close by. Why on earth would anyone choose to move out? At the top of the village is the spectacular church, standing proudly overlooking its congregation. In a way, its wonderful position emphasises the striking architecture of this church. The range of windows in the south wall, in perpendicular style, stretch from parapet to the ground, and there are even two more windows in the wall above the porch, Brilliant stone tracery gives this church the feel of a miniature cathedral. Its parapet is castellated with a large number of terrific carvings and gargoyles below. It was clearly Norman in origin, but like almost all the churches we've visited, altered and extended over the centuries from the 11th to the 19th. For example, the tower has four stages. The bottom three are Norman and the top is 13th century. The whole is topped off by a 15th century parapet. Inside, the benefit of the spectacular windows is felt from the moment you walk in. Light floods the huge West Tower arch and the Three Bay North Arcade, both of them late Norman in origin. It contains all kinds of treasures. There's a Norman tub-shaped font with a pattern of interlacing arches. There's a wonderful 15th century wine glass shaped pulpit, high and imperious. It must be great to preach from up there. The pulpit has clearly been moved at some stage. Where it stands now, it blocks what was the entrance to the rude stairs and the piscina of what used to be a nave altar. I suspect it used to be on the other side of the chancel arch. There's a rather wonderful contemporary sculpture of the Madonna and Child in a niche on the north wall, sculpted by Helen Fraser Rock at the beginning of the 20th century, 
and exhibited at the Royal Academy in 1911. Her work can also be seen on the front of the medieval manor house just southwest of the church. She must, I think, have had local connections. There's an excellent early 19th century royal arms, and you can find some interesting memorials on the walls. The stained glass is mostly Victorian with a couple of 15th century traces, but overall not enough to detract from the streaming light from outside which illuminates this lovely little church in more ways than one. Standing in the churchyard, surrounded by several elegant chest tombs, if you look southeast, you see an extremely pretty terrace of 17th century cottages. It's called Church Row and matches any Cotswold cottages for beauty. The aforementioned manor house just southwest of the church is a private house, of course, and the proprietors also own a lot of the farmland on this side of the village. It was notable that all we spoke to during our time in the village spoke warmly and with affection of the owners of this estate. This is how it should be in this kind of community, and increasingly in the ever-changing world of the country village, it is not. So many of these big houses are now owned by people who either don't live in them or spend most of their time elsewhere. This makes it extremely difficult to develop the relationship with the community that is so important when your property has such an influence on their lives. Just below Church Row is the village pub called the Seven Tons recently taken over by chef Thomas Conway and Simon Wilson White to fulfill a lifelong ambition. Ross and I dropped in for lunch and it could not have been more welcoming. We sat in a warm bar surrounded by the old oak beams and Cotswold stone walls you always hope for in a country pub and served a delicious, uncomplicated meal with great local beer. This place has lost none of its old-fashioned charm and sits perfectly in its surroundings. It even has a row of stables outside, which I'm told are used these days for storage and other things, but I'm assured, given sufficient notice, could be quickly restored to their original purpose, should you decide to arrive here on horseback. Somehow it would seem appropriate. After our lunch, we drove down about four and a half miles of country lane to reach what is, in fact, less than a mile away as the crow flies. One of the country's most spectacular Roman relics. The outstanding Chedworth Roman Villa, owned and run by the National Trust. They kindly gave us full access and a guided tour of this remarkable place and we will be doing a proper in-depth piece about it in the near future. For now, here are some glimpses of the amazing treasures to be found here. Evans writes in 1905 of this place, Forty years ago, you would have seen nothing of the extensive remains which have now been revealed. You might have walked through the undisturbed woodland, little suspecting that the country house of a wealthy Roman or Romanized Briton lay beneath your feet. But a little matter sometimes kindles a great fire. It happened one day that a keeper of the Earl of Eldon had lost a ferret. As he was searching for the animal, he turned up a number of dice-like objects, which at once struck his attention. On examination, they turned out to be Roman tesserae. It's hard to overstate the beauty of the astonishing remnants that have been revealed over the 20th century, and the story of how it has been excavated, carefully curated and preserved over the years by the National Trust, is worthy of much more than these few seconds of comment. We will be back. I hope you've enjoyed our little trip around Chedworth. It is extraordinary. It's a life-enhancing place, this. And the colours have been so wonderful. The day has been brilliant. The sun has shone. We've had an absolutely wonderful time. 
Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. You can find us on all the normal platforms. And we'll see you again in the very near future, somewhere else in the Cotswolds.